Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbucks here. Welcome back to another episode of the Journey Career Mode with Atlanta United, still in the MLS, about a third of the way through this second season with them. And at the moment, we're on track for both the US Open Cup and the MLS at the moment. You can see that we are absolutely dominating the Eastern Conference. We're going to have at least a double-digit lead going into the next couple of games in New York City FC are like even though they have a game in hand, they're 13 points behind us. It's just brilliant. We are absolutely storming it. We are undefeated this season, by the way. We've drawn like two or three games and like, oh, you can see there, we've drawn two games and won 10. We'll have a cheeky little look at what's happening in the Western Conference as well. Minnesota United, Real Salt Lake, the Earthquakes, LAFC, and yeah, wow. A few other teams I wasn't expecting to be so low down. Like, we just played LA Galaxy. They're on the bottom of the Western Conference, and we're gonna be playing the Seattle Sounders in this episode. I'm starting off with this game. I know the Sounders have their stadium in this game, so uh, I wanted to just, you know, I think, what is it, the Cent Century Link Field or whatever it's called, but I wanted to go up against them because they're a team we haven't played yet. So let's give it a go against them then. We are gonna go in again with the same starting 11. Justice Wagner is now my, you know, he's one of my center back partners, like starting center backs now. Pogba still at 74, at left center back, and Wagner now at right center back. He ever since getting up to like the 70 ratings has really stood up and been quite decent. He's made, he's had a few big moments. Like I played the last game or my first game starting with him against LA Galaxy. Thought he was tremendous whenever he was called upon. So we'll keep it going. Hopefully continue this run. And that man there is the highest goal scorer in the MLS by a big margin. He's got like 11 goals. Take a look, he's miles ahead of the rest of his competition. Honestly, this is crazy. I want him to have a big bloody season. and. I, at the same time, don't want him to be too good because wherever I end up going to after the MLS, I'm genuinely thinking about bringing him along with me, uh, Joseph Martinez, but uh, if he ends up doing too well, he might end up costing too much. I'm looking at the Sounders team too, by the way, and I'm trying to look for names that I recognize and I can't particularly see an awful lot of them, but they're playing the same formation pretty much that we are. Let's do it then. Let's get this game underway. Hopefully get off this episode to a winning start. There's the tackle. Martinez looks like he's gonna run in trouble, but he doesn't and then he slips a little ball in here Over the top headed in. Well, how easy was that that within a couple of minutes the first attack? We've already scored amazing a little ball through from uh, Pity Martinez into I'm not quite sure Maybe it's Villa, but look at the space that Martinez has not a chance in the world He's missing from there. No one went with him and he's got an open goal. Good one too there. Barco is away. I can see Martinez in an offside position. He's onside now. Little pass into the middle and fucking... All oh, that was working so good and then Martinez. Gonzalo Martinez shanks his shot. Okay, that is a tremendous ball. Martinez, you're taking a long time. Very long time to get going there. That is a goal... That is an absolute goal scoring opportunity that you've just... Pissed away by taking so fucking long to take the ball and to get it under control. I think I see what they're doing now. Man, they have fucking everyone up. They're like Gengen pressing me right now. They are not letting me get out of my own half. And you know what? It's fucking working, to be fair. That's how the, go that's how the game's really gone. But finally, we have a chance here. So you see what I mean? They've only got three up. We should be able to go here. If I can time a through ball in, which I have. If I can get a low cross. And an open net. And yes! Two, there's the counter-attack that we were looking for. And finally, the breathing space. Ezequiel Barco got it. The keeper was coming out into no man's land and eventually decided, oh wait, that's a mistake. He's left the goal gaping. Barco down the middle of it. That's only his first goal in the MLS this season. I'm shocked by that, but at least now, better late than never. And for a second, I was going to say full-time. No, it's half-time. Still got a, another 45 left to go, but at the moment... It is good. Their game plan, I don't know if it's going to change, is if I have the ball deep in my own third or in my own half, they are putting all the pressure on me to try to get me to turn it over. And it has worked on occasions. They just haven't been able to score from it. But they leave themselves so exposed at the back and we have made them pay twice. Oh my god. That is a woeful challenge. I can't believe he missed the ball. And is this a bloke that's already on a yellow card? I'm not sure. He is now, that's for sure. So, yeah. No, that's what I thought. He was already on a yellow. Now he's off and gone. And they're down to 10. Great tackle there from Villalba. And continuing it here. Martinez. Another little one. 
put it onto his left boot, and the goalkeeper is rooted to the spot. Ezequiel Barco, he's only got one goal all season. He's now doubled it in this one game. Unlike the LAFC game and the LA Galaxy game, this this is just I'm loving how I, I'm loving how the Seattle Sounders are going about it, and the fact that they're down to ten certainly helps as well. Shit, even Gonzalo Martinez is having a pretty good game. And now Nandez is going to try to play through Martinez. Martinez, can he get a fourth? Yes, he can. This could be an absolutely glorious day and a disastrous one for Seattle. How bad is this going to get for the Sounders and how good is it going to get for us? Phil Albert. Looking for that low cross. That's a brilliant goal. Oh, what, a, what a ball. It was served up on a tee for Martinez. I'm just not having the goal scoring luck with him. Even though he's actually gotten into the game now and looked all right. Just can't put it in the net with him. I can't keep a clean sheet. I can't do it right now, honestly. This fucking infuriates me. I'm thinking I'm going to get someone in the way of that cross. I don't. And the cross is always so perfect. It's in between two defenders. And finds, what is it, Bruin, I think that's name is, perfectly. Come on. Up the middle. Martinez, there you go. How dare you score against me? That's a fifth. There we go. And I think it's uh, I think it's a hat trick for Joseph Martinez. I believe it is because he was 11 goals for the season. Now up to 14 goals for this season. Absolutely on fire. To think we nearly sold him off to PSG for like 70, 80 million. I was never, ever going to do so. We had the uh, possibility, should I say, but I would never do it. We are now into the seventh minute of three. I don't know where this has come from. Finally, the referee puts Seattle out of their misery. Could have been, should have been six with that last effort. Fucking God knows what happened there. But Joseph Martinez with three goals, a hat-trick, the first of this season. May there be many, many more. The undefeated streak, the undefeated season continues. And look at this, Farina is now up to an 80 rating. I think I might stop giving him draws now and go and work on someone else. We've advanced into next week, so I can now change them around. I think what I might do, instead of uh, giving Farinez a drill, I might do uh, I might do our mate with the 90-something overall here, uh, Carson Park. Already up to a 52, but I'm going to start training him, and uh, we'll work on some of his defending stats for a starter, because he's a right-back with woeful defending stats. So yeah, I'm just going to give him one drill, train him up, and hopefully get his overall ticking over nice and quickly, because he's definitely one to keep your eye open for. Wagner 73, Park probably getting up to maybe even more than a 50, no, just the 53. Now all these other games coming up, I'm just going to simulate. I'm actually going to see what the next game I'm going to play is going to be. We've got Toronto FC, Philadelphia Union. I feel like there should be a US Open Cup game coming up, but that's not until, wow, August, the quarterfinal against Houston. In that case, I'm going to play the game against the Philadelphia Union because we're first in the Eastern Conference, they're second. And it'll also be the first game I play at home this season. Look at that. It's another 5 new win. Martinez got four. He is going to score 30, 40 goals this season. Man, he's on track for it. Look at this. He's taken the complete piss here. 18 goals in 14 matches. The next best has only got six. And that is actually uh, Kellen Acosta tied with Montero, Emon, Sabanito, and Pombo. Oh my god. I can't believe what I'm witnessing. Anyway, the next game in uh, the MLS is against Toronto FC. Another home game. Another big win. And again, all the goals scored. No, not by Josef Martinez. Got mixed up. Gonzalo Pity Martinez. And because it's been just a little while since we've seen certain players getting a start, I'm going to give a couple of names that we haven't seen too much of this season. Robinson at centre-back. Carlton's going to start a game at left mid. Saprit Singh back into the starting 11 at centre attack in midfield. They're the only changes because we've played a fair few. Uh, in the last couple of days. We've actually got another game after this two days later. Everyone's going to be stuffed for that one, but that's the team we're going with. Come on. Oh, it's good to be back home. Here we go. Hopefully on track for yet another win or for at least keeping the defeated or undefeated season alive. Seven goals in his last three matches. And I think if you included the game that we played against Seattle, then it's like 10. Oh, <laughs> not what you want there. That's a free corner. Oh, Singh just able to get that little toe poke through ball away from Martinez. And brilliantly dragged back. Martinez, go on. He's got some space here. Shifting it. 
Waiting for a chance to shoot. Instead, weighs up his options brilliantly and gets it to Acosta. All that space in the box. And by all that space, I mean barely any. Yet he's cool and calm and finds Kellen Acosta. Look at that. Surrounded by defenders thinking, do I shoot? Do I not shoot? And barely anything to go to. And then finally, Acosta opens up as an option. And he tucks it away very, very nicely to open the scoring. Kellen Acosta, you know, a surprise goal scorer for us too. He's our second highest goal scorer in the team. Joseph Martinez is obviously killing it with 20 goals. But Acosta with seven from centre midfield. Not bad. He definitely gets up for him, that's for sure. Just threaded that one through. Sarpreet Singh off to the left here. Barco's just come on. Over for Martinez. It's number two. You cannot stop him right now. He's just on fire. Picked off here by Murillo, the right back. He's got it for Martinez. A little fake shot should do it. And that's all it takes. All it takes. A second for Josef Martinez. It's just ridiculous. I'm running out of superlatives. It was started by the interception by Murillo. And the fake shot, it just, you know it's going to work for you every single time. Even on his left, he finds the corner absolutely just brilliantly. Look at this. Just well away from the keeper, tucking in in the corner. That takes him up to 20 goals now for the season. And there we go. Halftime, 3-0 lead. This game could be all but over already. And we're continuing our dominance right now in the MLS. And that man is just surely unstoppable. Barring an absolute catastrophe, we've already won this game. It's just a matter of if we can go and hopefully get Joseph Martinez yet another hat-trick. Wow, went to sleep there at the back and conceded. Once again, they they were just picking passes through really cleanly. That's one of the first times in a long time I've seen ultimate difficulty actually just completely take my defense apart there. I don't really know what I was doing, but they had the uh, they had all the all the plays in the right uh, all the plays in the right areas and they were playing passes brilliantly and that's just a well worked goal by ultimate difficulty. I, I've not seen one of those in a while. Poor marking. That's so poor. That's so poor. He's got two goals and two assists now today, Josef Martinez. Villalba scores. As soon as we can see, we get it right back. Look, I'm just running for it, driving for it. Eventually, just shift right. Don't know where the hell the defender that was marking Villalba went. He just decides to completely get off him and gives him the easiest of chances. There's the tackle by Singh. That's a clean one. And that's a brilliant ball through. Martinez! Hattrick number three in like less than a month. I, I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. The boy is a star. He is benefiting from some very good work by his teammates, winning the ball back in great areas and just slipping him through straight away. But Martinez is always in the right space. And just gorgeous, gorgeous finish. Pass the keeper, too easy. 21. He's got 21 goals in the MLS, and there's only been about 15 or so games played. He is putting up, I know it is only America, but like Messi Ronaldo type numbers with the goals that he's getting. He could even be getting another assist. He could maybe. Barco is off. Could maybe even get another goal here, you know. He could do. Oh my god. Oh my god. Four goals, two assists. This is. I just, I can't believe it. I was thinking about doing nothing but shooting with Ezequiel Barco. But look at Martinez. He's just too quick. None of the defenders can keep up with him. And he just kept running that whole time. He wanted it. He wants it. 22 goals. This is just freaking ridiculous. I'm literally in awe. I'm like in awe like when I watch Lionel Messi play football. I'm in awe watching Josef Martinez in this game. I want to start bowing and going like, Josef, Josef. Good spin. He's here again. He's here again. Oh, over the bar. I'm trying to find a fifth for him. Oh, wow. Can't open again here. Farinez with a big save. And we are just about done here. I don't think we'll have another chance to score. Doesn't mean I won't try to slip. Nah, that was never going to... Maybe should have gone for a ball over the top. But we're done here. This is a historic day. He has six goal involvements, Josef Martinez, including a hat-trick, four goals to be exact, two assists, and the best game I've ever seen by any one player in any career mode game I've played in the entirety of FIFA 19. I'm in awe. Josef Martinez 
Take a bow. You are something special. Good God, that man is a freak. A Venezuelan freak. And only a day or so later, we have another game, this time against DC United. Is anyone surprised that he's won the player of the month? Can we keep it going? We're still undefeated too. Let's remember, whenever we get our first loss, whenever it comes, it's not today. Josef Martinez doesn't get in the action. It's a brace for the other one, for Pity Martinez. Minor changes to training, by the way. I'm going to give Sarpreet Singh some drills too now as well. He picked up like an assist or two, I think, in that game as well. He was all right. Carson Park, though, just soaring up to a 55 already. When he started, when we signed him, he was like 50, like at the beginning of the season. Now look where he is. Goodness me. All right, well, there's three more games left in this month. We'll just get them all out of the way. And what game am I, even in July, it's uh, not that busy. Well, you know what? In that case, I reckon the next game I'm going to play will be the quarterfinal of the US Open. And that is a good two months away, but only five games that we have to just sim straight away. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead straight to it. We do enter the transfer window on the 1st of July, though. So maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know. What do I, what do, I do? Tell you what I'm going to do, because it's only just popped into my head now. It might be a bit too late, but I'm going to try to search for some players in the last month of their contract, because the MLS season works differently, right? We're about to enter the July-August transfer window um, in like a month or so. So I wonder if there are players in the last month or the last year of their contract that I might be able to pick up from like in Europe and stuff like that. I I wonder. I just, I, I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out. So give me a second. I'm, I'm going to check, but for now, I'm just going to advance through these three games and we'll see what sort of results we get. We have got a win, a win, and a win. There you go. This team is too strong. It's too strong for MLS. Not when you've got Josef Martinez in your team too. But yeah, look, I'm going to just keep advancing forward and see if I can find any players in the last year of their contract and pick them up right before they expire. Because their contracts would be expiring, if I'm correct, in like a week or two. So I'll stop advancing around about here then, with a few days left to go. Now, do we have any players picked up or found in the Global Transfer Network? We will see instructions. We have 30. So let's figure it out. Are these all... Okay, it expires in seven months, even though... Yeah, that's probably not accurate. Um, oh man, I'm so confused. So this is what's a bit confusing to me because all these contracts of these guys that are in like England and the like and stuff, their contract should be expiring 1st of July. And I was thinking, oh, could I sign them on a pre-contract? But it says that their contract expires in like seven months. Steve Munio with Huddersfield, another seven months. Hurahan, six months. So I can't actually get these guys on pre-contracts and get them in in this upcoming window. That's what I was hoping to do, but... Uh, no, it turns out I'd only be able to... I don't know. I don't understand how that works. But uh, yeah, regardless, I won't be able to get him. I don't know. That was that was my idea in my head of what I thought I might be able to do. Picking up some players before... Or right as they're about to... Their contracts expire. But no, nah, apparently that's not how it goes down. We picked up a training injury, which is unfortunate. Six weeks for Kellen Acosta with a torn hip. In that case, it looks like we're going to have to get uh, a few of the other boys a bit of a run just for a while because six weeks will keep them out for a bit. And lads, if I'm being honest, in this window, I if, if I couldn't get pretty decent players on a free like I was thinking I could, then there's only one thing that I really want to do. I'm so happy with my starting 11. For MLS standards, we're tearing it up. You've seen it doesn't even need improving, even though we've got the funds to do so, my starting 11. So what I think I might do is only make the one transfer and it's a player that's probably barely going to get any game time but at the moment the backup to Josef Martinez at striker is a 68 69 rated player that I've played before I think Brandon Vasquez who uh, I don't know he's just in comparison maybe not as good so I wanted to try to get a slightly better backup striker and that man I think might be Dario Rodriguez who has got some nice mental nice physical ball control and dribbling is decent as well Finishing could maybe it's a somewhat under his overall, but still more or less I'm pretty happy with him as a player and compared to all the other strikers I have like Bore who I won't be able to get he just recently joined and I think Rod, uh, Roger Martinez is a little outside of my budget So I'm gonna go for Dario Rodriguez as a backup striker. That's the only signing I'll make and I forgot to mention too uh, His value is 8.5. We might have to pay between 10 and 14. What's his release clause less than 5 mil? Hell yeah, I'm just going to pay that and go straight to negotiations. So let's just do it then. We'll give him the wage that he wants, which is a little actual increase on his current wage and a signing bonus and goals bonus. It's unbelievable. But yes, we'll give it to him. Done and dusted. We'll end up seeing if he actually makes 
some appearances for us if we need him to step into the starting 11. I hope to God not because it means we'll have missed Martinez, but he's in. Sweet. Okay, we are done now. All done and dusted. Have a look at Park. He's up to six, up to 58 already. He's going to grow by like 15 or 20 in one season. That's bloody crazy. But okay, let's uh, let's get these next two games out of the way. And the one last game I'll play will be this quarterfinal in this episode of the US Open. But all right, back in action after nearly a month off without a single game. We're playing it away, though, to start. Of course, it's away games. Am I about to take my first loss? No, it's a 2-2 draw. Still undefeated for the season. Oh, goddamn. That was a close one. That absolutely was a close one, but it's still not over yet. We have another away game to get out of the way against the team that we're actually going to be playing a little later in that US Open Cup quarterfinal. And again, they score straight away. Is this the one? No, it's not. Villalba, I just saw him score right before I skipped ahead. Two draws from two away games. 18 wins, 4 draws, 0 losses. Who's, like, honestly, the, the team with the least losses after us? We've got New York City FC with 5, and in the Western Conference, nah. So, we've got no losses, and then New York City with 5, the next best in terms of, you know, teams that have actually lost games. That's crazy. We're 18 points ahead of Toronto FC with a game in hand. As a matter of fact, I reckon I'm just going to, as soon as it's confirmed that we have sealed our spot on top of the Eastern Conference, I'm just going to go all the way to the end of the regular season and start up the playoffs. I genuinely. Because there'll be no point. We can't go any higher or any lower once it's confirmed mathematically that we have sealed our spot on top. As uh, we see Gonzalo Martinez, an offer coming in for him from AC Milan, 57 million we could get for him. Look, he, he, he can piss me off and he's not the best at times, but he's not terrible. 57 million I could definitely work with, but I don't really have any replacements lined up, so I just won't bother. One more game to sim. The Vancouver Whitecaps don't look like they've been playing well recently. Three losses in their last three. And make, wow, make that four. It was a close one. Pogba picked up a late injury though, so might have to replace him. But okay, finally, we have reached the quarterfinal. We're going to play the Houston Dynamo. Other teams that might potentially be going through. Columbus Crew have given me issues in the past. Rail Salt Lake are doing all right this season. New York City FC as well. So... We'll see who gets it. And this is the team I've selected for this cup game. Martinez still in. Gonzalo Martinez. Barco Villalba the same. Remedi is going in for a somewhat injured Acosta. Nandez starts as well. Uh, fullbacks are the same. Goalkeepers the same. And Justin, Justice Wagner still at, at centre back. And because Pogba's injured, I'm going to go with Robinson at centre back. So the only player below 70 overall. But he's far from a liability. I actually quite like him too. Even with the lower overall. But... This for a semi-final spot. Come on. And uh, the Houston Dynamo, I don't necessarily know awful lot about. So if any star names pop up, I probably won't be able to recognize them. I'm trying to keep my eye open for a couple of them. Uh, Martinez, maybe. Ellis, I think I recognize. Is he like a... Um, or Lund, uh, Lundquist, I can't quite pronounce his name. But I think I am familiar with him, maybe. Uh, and I think Ellis, if I'm correct, is like a Honduras... Right midfielder, if I, I think I can recall seeing him. I remember him being somewhat decent potential, so maybe he might be an issue. I mean, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, it'll be as straightforward as every other game has been in this episode, and we just dominate, and Joseph Martinez goes to town. Oh, that was a little deflection that actually helped out. Oh, a little block from Lundquist, but the goalkeeper saves. Barco's going to get to that first, though. Running in here. Oh, going for that near post, nearly, and the... Keepers made two good saves straight away. Oh, that is absolute. What is that clearance attempt? You've just headed it straight in front of goal. I'm, I'm honestly wondering if we were the ones that won the header there. Because if we did, there's no excuse for where that ball ended up. Fucking have no idea. Let's find out. Oh, I can't tell. I still can't tell. But look at... Look, you just... For the cross to come in and we expect to clear it away. Well, that angle doesn't help either. For it to end up right fucking there is disgraceful. Just anywhere, literally anywhere else. Just giving them a free one. And after we dominated the first 10 minutes and had like three really good chances to score, didn't take them. Now we're down through to that bullshit. All right, at least we get this one though. A P-roller. Didn't time it well with the shot, but Gonzalo Martinez. Oh man, it's been a long time since I've been able to celebrate with him scoring a goal. But that is a big one straight away after conceding. 
You remember, like, uh, Iron Robin in the Champions League final, just a little P-roller that just crosses the line, and there was a defender there waiting to try to clear it. I'd have been pissed if he had got there, but no. Thankfully, it just got past them all. There we go. Almost instantaneous response, and it's back at 1-1. They're holding me back here nicely. Shit, I just have to work it to this left-hand side. I was hoping to just keep going down the line. Kufre. Cross, no. Barco, no. Covering off all these outlets very nicely, but still, one stop, an absolute screamer by Nathaniel Nandez. I was genuinely, like, I was struggling to find out how I was going to move that ball forward, and what a shot in the end. It was well defended by Houston, but that little gap opened up, and what a hit. Thankfully, one of my own bloody Gonzalo Martinez was able to jump out the way of it and let it go all the way through to take the lead in this, oh, in this quarterfinal. Oh, a little deflection, just a little interception, but no time really. So, 2-1, going in a half time, and it's very good to get the lead before it. This is a somewhat tougher game. Not an incredibly tough game, but it's, you know, we won our last couple of games, what, 6-1 and 5-1 or something like that. I don't know. This, I'm having to work for. What was that? You saw who was trying to pass you. You saw the player icon indi uh, indicator that popped up over the player's head. It went... Fucking 15 yards behind him. And now he comes the cross. And thankfully it's cleared away. So nothing's going to come of it. Martinez. Left hand side here. Oh, this could be three. It could be Barco. Barco! Saved. It's there again, Barco. Can anyone please swing a boot at it? No. Still no. Oh, man. It's there. It's coming close. Could have had a go from downtown with Rometty. Didn't do it. Although maybe now here. With Martinez over the fucking crossbar. It took like a... Uh, like a bobble or something. Like it bounced up right as he took the touch. What is that all about? Fuck's sake. We have the lead, but it is anything but straightforward. Oh, wow. That is a on-the-money cross, and they just set that up for fucking perfectly for him. But he just, Struner, put it wide. Kufre, Carlson's just come on. I think we've timed him through nicely here. Very nicely indeed. Is a cross on. Float it up. Across the face of goal! It's off the fucking crossbar. If they come back and get an equaliser late in this game, I will be fucking furious. Ellis is on side. i got to just take him out there. Missed the tackle, but that cross is poor. Nagby, off to the right. Tight angle, blocked. Went for it. Nah, I just can't fucking grab another one against these boys. So infuriating considering that we scored like nearly 11 or 12 goals in the other two games that I played, but just can't grab this third. Valau with a cross. No, nah, there's a man right ahead. Fuck it. Haven't been able to get another one. Fair play to Houston Dynamo. But you're out the competitions regardless. That's that. We're through to the semis. Still in the US Open Cup. And who will we get in the final four? It's either going to be Real Salt Lake, Seattle Sounders, or New York City FC. One of those three. And uh, it would appear as though we have New York City Red Bulls to play. But two days after that, we play the semifinals. After such a huge gap waiting for the quarterfinals, a week later we play the semis. And that is going to be against Real Salt Lake. Well, in that case, I'll sim this game coming up against uh, New York Red Bulls, get it out of the way, and then we'll leave this episode with that semifinal to play. I feel so confident that we are going to finish top of our conference with the amount of the difference in points. But uh, still, we score early here. 2-2 draw. We were the away side, and so, you know, I'm going to take it. But look, we're, we're 20 points ahead with only uh, about 10 or so games left to go in this season. Whenever we do mathematically know that we're finishing top of the conference, I'm skipping all the way to the playoffs. That That is exactly, that is my only intention. But until the next episode of the Atlanta United career mode, which could maybe very well end up being like the last one. I, I don't know. We will see. Till then, my name is Masterbucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a good one.